Hello, good day, my glorious families. I welcome you to today's chapter of the day. Guess what book we are visiting today? We are going into the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. What does the book of Romans talk about? The book of Romans teaches us principles of theology and practice. Teaches us principles of imputed righteousness. Teaches us principles of Christian doctrine. Teaches us principles of live by, like live by faith or something. So let's go into the chapter 8 and see what the Holy Spirit has for us today. One thing I notice is that if we can keep doing this daily, we will definitely amount to something. At least we will we'll be able to achieve something before the year runs out. The subbedding, <clears throat> please pardon my voice today. The subbedding says the life-giving spirit. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you has set you free from the law of sin and death. What the law could not do, since it was weakened, weakened by the flesh, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as a sin offering. In order that the law's requirements would be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Hmm. Those are powerful ones. For those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on the things of the Spirit. Now the mindset of the flesh is death. But the mindset of the Spirit is life and peace. The mindset of the flesh is hostile to God because it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it is unable to do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, <clears throat> if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Now, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he will raise he will then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your moral body, mortal body to life through his spirit who lives in you. Those are powerful. I don't know if you if you if you know what I'm saying. Those are powerful, those are powerful to live in the spirit. I pray the Lord will help us to live in the spirit. It's a lot. For the flesh to completely die, it's a lot. For us to be dead to hunger and to sin, it's a lot. I pray that the Lord, the spirit will cook in us, the spirit will help us, the spirit will... You know, the Spirit will assist us in all, doing all this and achieving it. Let's move into another subheading. The Holy Spirit's ministries. So then, brothers and sisters, we are not obligated, obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Because if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if the Spirit puts, if the Spirit you put to death, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all those led by God's Spirit are God's sons. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, 
you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Habba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with them. That's um, verse 17. Let's move on to another verse. Verse 18. From groans to glory. For I consider, that's another subheading. For I consider that the sufferings of, of, of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. For the creation eagerly waits with anticipation for God's Son to be revealed. For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in the hope that the creation itself will also be set free from the bondage to decay into the glorious freedom of God's children. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together with labor pains um, until now. Not only that, but we ourselves who have the Spirit as the first fruit, we also groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption. The redemption of our bodies, now in the hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is not hope, because who hopes for what he sees? Now if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with patience. In the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, <laughs> because we do not know what to pray for as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings. And he knows, and he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. You know, this is really ministering to me. Sometimes you are putting prayers in some ways that are not right. Like God or let me say the spirit itself knows better, knows what prayer fits some situation and how to help deal with some situation. I pray God will help us because that's all I can say. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those who, who for new, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Of his son. <clears throat> So he would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those who predestined, he also called. And those who he called, he also justified. And those who he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? They say the believers triumph. That's another subject. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He did not even spare his own son, but offered him up for us all. How will he not also with him grant us everything? Who can bring an accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died, but even more has been raised. <laughs> He also is at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or distress or persecution or famine or, or, or nakedness or danger or sword? As it, as, it, as it is written, because of you, we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are, not, we, are, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor any other created 
thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining me. I love you. My time is running out. I appreciate you. Put your comment down if you enjoy anything here. Bye.